Hey everybody, welcome to Franny Square and to episode 34 of Crochet and Tell, where it's all about you. Okay, first things first, I want to apologize for disappearing for a month. It has been a crazy month, crazy good month, but crazy. In any case, I'm back. Today, I'm doing episode 34 of Crochet and Tell, and then within the next few days, part two of the Twinkle Stars Baby Blanket tutorial will go up. I've already finished the border, and I'm almost done the stars. So once I complete the filming of the star portion, that will go up. I've missed all of you and I hope you're having a great summer. I'd love to hear what you're up to. So if you have a chance in the comments below, just let me know what you've been up to over this past month. I also wanted to send a big thank you to Mary Gannon. She sent me some happy mail. It said, enjoy your gift, sending you a few books to help you get started on gifts for your upcoming grandbabies from Mary Gannon. And she sent me this book, Easy Crochet Gifts for a Baby, 20 Projects for Showers, Birthdays, Charity, and More. And you can see on the back here, adorable projects. I cannot wait to try these. And then another crochet baby book and a baby and lovely crochet patterns book. There are so many great patterns in here. I can't wait to get started. Thank you so much for that. That was so nice of you. Okay, without further ado, let's get to your projects. The first projects come from Lisa Mayen. Take a look. She says, I have a heck of a time taking pictures of myself, but I did it. I made the top for me. Woohoo! Now, if you remember in the last uh, crochet and tell Lisa had made a top and she felt she made it too big for herself and she was going to give it to her sister so here it is in her size and it looks awesome I love the colors I love the pattern next she said I have not completed much lately when I design stuff I start crocheting then if I don't like the look I frog it back to the beginning I've done that before the tote bag is my own pattern and it was frogged three times before I liked it. The second picture is another top for myself, my own pattern. It was only frogged twice, and I am halfway done the front piece. That's great. The tote bag looks like it matches your top that you made in the other picture. And I love the colors for this next one. So fall-like. I am getting ready to decorate for fall. Then she said, I am working on winter donations and just finished two more items for the cancer clinic donations. I was surprised that I actually had enough yarn for a shawl and the baby afghan. I love these colors. Really nice. And finally, she said, attached is my first Christmas present done. I am making matching cardigans for the two great granddaughters and their mom, my granddaughter. I know the one for the youngest is going to be big. Didn't start measuring until I was almost done the second half. Oops, <laughs> LOL, oh well. You know, it'll just fit as she gets older. Now on to the one for the seven-year-old. This looks great, I love it. Great idea to have matching ones for the sisters and their mother. Thank you so much for sending those in, Lisa. The next projects are from Vicki. Take a look. She said, it's been a while since I sent you show and tell, so I've got some catching up to do. First up is one of three blankets that I'm making for my brothers. I'm using the same pattern and the same yarn in different colors. I've already made this blanket up in another colorway for my husband. The details are Cascade Cartwheel Yarn, Seven Balls. It's labeled color 18, but that color number doesn't exist. I think it's color 10, Nashville. You can get this on sale at Webs. Pattern from Bag O' Day Crochet. Pattern repeat is eight stitches plus three. I used a K hook and chained 147 stitches with an L hook. It finished to about 46 by 64. Second is my first crochet garment. There were two starts to this project as I learned how to use changes in hook size to manage the sizing of the garment. 
that is a great way to manage the sizing and this came out beautifully. The pattern is the perfect t-shirt by Originally Lovely and it's very well written. I used Lion Brand Kobu yarn. I love that yarn, so soft. I used a G hook for the body but switched to an F hook for some rows at the waist to bring it in a bit and I think that worked really well. I also used the F size for the sleeve cap and neckline. Finally, I have a donation baby blanket and baby hats. The blanket finished to about 32 by 35, and you can see in one of the photos that one of the skeins was a different dye lot. Fortunately, it doesn't really show in real life. The blanket colors in the photo are really off. The color is a very pale purple. The yarn is Yarn Bee Sweet Delight, three weight, about 1,200 yards. Pattern Vintage Inspired Fan Stitch Blanket by Blossom Crochet. Hook size H 5.0 millimeter. When I finished, I had one skein of yarn left over. So I just started making baby hats until all I had left was one little ball. I have all of the baby hat patterns linked in this blog post. And I will put the link to the blog post in the description below. Thank you so much for sending all of that in, Vicki. Great work. Next, Holly Prey completed one of Janie Crow's patterns came out beautiful. Take a look. She said, hi, Franny. I did the Persian tile blanket by Janie Crow in Eastern Jewel colorway. I had been eyeing for a long time and then saw your flash review and decided to try it. We are dropping it off at the Indian State Fair in a couple of hours. Eek. Hope you are doing well. Love the channel and con and congrats on your upcoming grandbabies. Thank you so much, Holly. And this came out so beautifully. I love Janie's patterns. And then later, Holly sent me another email to tell me that her blanket won first place at the fair. So congratulations on that. Beautiful, beautiful work. Next, Barbara Nines sent in a project. She said, hi, Franny. In my latest whip, I am using a lovely stitch I found on YouTube. The channel is Melodora Crochet, the Glover Stitch. The stitch is gently textured and easily worked. I swatched it in a few different weights of yarn using various hook sizes. It works great in all of them. This lapgan is worked in Sirdar Jewel Spun, a three-weight acrylic using an eye hook. The colorway is sunset. I am loving the result. As always, my best to you and our community. I love the colors of this. So beautiful. And the stitch too. Really nice. Thank you for sending that in, Barbara. Next are a bunch of projects from Amanda Bradshaw. She said, well, Franny, you've created a monster. <laughs> I know what you mean. I get carried away myself. She's made a bunch of projects here. She said, I'm sure you're busy with grandkids on the way, so no rush, just wanted to share some crochet joy. Have a great day. So here she has size 2T shorts with drawstring linen stitch waistband for stretch. Those are adorable. Oh my goodness, I love it with the bow. A double elf hat worked from the base up, similar to the construction of shorts. In place of pom-poms, novelty yarn is stitched round and round on top of itself and woven into the peak in a big, secure, fun, messy puff. That's great. That will be great for the cold weather too. The neck warmer, short cow, gator, was a request from my sweet little nephew who has a fantastic imagination. The hat is an improved design from the Navy Newsboy hat. I love that. The hats are one to three year old size. I've made pieces for lots of people and I've learned that on average, the standard size measurements run small for custom pieces so now I always ask for a couple of basic measurements if the piece is for a specific child. If anyone has tips on adult sizing measurements, please leave a comment. Thanks everyone for sharing your beautiful creations. Happy to have found this community and we're happy you found us too. Thank you for sending those in, Amanda. So one of the best things about having this channel is that I've gotten to develop relationships with so many people in this community through email, text, telephone. And one of the people that I've developed a relationship with is Beth McCammon. 
And I remember early on when I was doing my videos, I posed a question to the community, which I often do. And she sent me an email saying, when she hears a question, she can't rest until she finds the answer. <laughs> and then she answered my question. And from there, we emailed periodically back and forth. She's a phenomenal writer. She would make me laugh and tell me all kinds of stories. And I learned so much from her. In any case, Beth's health has been deteriorating and she is now on hospice. And her daughter sent me a, an email with a project that she's done recently. I'm going to read it to you now. It says, hi, my name is Yvonne McCammon. I am writing to you on behalf of my mother, Beth McCammon. She has requested I provide permission to send and post a picture of my daughter wearing the cape my mother made for her. My mother was recently hospitalized and now released home with hospice. She has little time left with us. She completed the cape while in the hospital. My mother speaks so highly of you and her crochet community, such a wonderful support for her. She was determined to complete projects for family members as a remembrance of her. This cape came out phenomenal and I'm so very proud of her. And here it is. And Beth has one of the best attitudes I have ever seen. So I wrote back and I told Yvonne the story about her mother and how she sent me that first email. And she said, my mother is the smartest person I know. I learn something new every day thanks to her. You and the crochet community are so dear to her and have actually helped revive her spirits and provided so much motivation and humor. I would truly appreciate it if you could please help to communicate to all the status of her health and please convey our love and appreciation of the crochet community. I have no idea how to even begin to reach anyone. Ma is unable to use laptop and even her cell phone right now, so this will be a big help. She was teaching my daughter how to crochet just in the past few weeks. It's an incredible skill. I am definitely not able to master myself. I don't believe that, Yvonne. We can get you crocheting. She really does love everyone dearly and misses the community. I am hoping I can somehow get on the laptop at her bedside and show her an update of the community soon. Well, Yvonne, your mother has been an integral part of this community. She's participated in so many show and tells and she sent me so many emails and really encouraged me to keep going. And we all appreciate her. So I hope you can pass that on to her and everybody, if you'd send your prayers for Beth, that would be wonderful. Okay, so that's it for this episode of Crochet and Tell. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got inspired as I always do. If you'd like to participate in the Crochet and Tell, feel free to send me an email to frannysquare at gmail.com with pictures of your projects and descriptions so I can let the community know anything you want them to know about your projects. Whether you it's a pattern that you followed or you made the pattern yourself, what yarn you used, if you learned anything while doing the project. We all love to learn from one another. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own and I'll see you soon.